Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 11 is brought to you by examfew.com. No more fear from exam. So now that I have introduced torque, it is time that we talk about angular momentum because torque and angular momentum are closely related to each other. So once we discuss each of these terms, then we will start solving some problems. And once we start solving problems, the concepts will become clearer to you. So what is angular momentum? It is again the rotational analog of linear momentum. It is denoted by L. So angular momentum is denoted by L. Like how we denote linear momentum, it is denoted by a small p. Similarly, we denote angular momentum by a small l. So angular momentum of a particle is defined as L is equal to R cross P. So now if you look at the relationships between linear velocity and angular velocity, linear momentum and angular momentum, force and torque, everywhere you see that the angular component is equal to the cross product of position vector and the linear component. So here if you see it quickly, I'm just telling this so that it becomes easier for you to remember. Now when you talk about the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity, you see that V is equal to omega cross R. Right? When you talk about torque and force, you see torque is equal to R cross F. When you talk about angular momentum and linear momentum, you see angular momentum is equal to R cross linear momentum. So that means the relationship between the angular component and the linear component is a cross product and the cross product is with a position vector. Right? So everywhere except the linear component and the angular component, the third quantity that is present is the position vector. Right? So now in this case, the magnitude of angular momentum will be given by rp sin theta where theta is the angle between the position vector and the linear momentum right okay now let us look at the relationship between torque and angular momentum so just now we saw that angular momentum l is given as the cross product of the position vector and the linear momentum so now if we differentiate it on both sides so differentiate on both sides. Now what do we get? We get dl by dt is equal to d by dt of r cross p. Right? Now this can be written as by property of uh, differentiation on cross product. We know that this becomes dr by dt cross p plus r cross dt by dt. Now, from where did I get all these? This is a rule for differentiation. If you want, you can check the lesson on differentiation in your mathematics videos. So now what is dr by dt? That is change of displacement with time. That is nothing but linear velocity, right? So this becomes v cross p plus r cross dp by dt, right? Now this becomes equal to V cross, what is linear momentum? It is nothing but mass into velocity plus R cross dp by dt. Now what is this? This now becomes V cross V. So V cross V is V into V sine theta. So theta will be 0 because the angle between V and V is 0. So this entire term will be 0. So this plus R cross dp by dt. So therefore we get dl by dt is equal to r cross. What is dp by dt? From Newton's second law we know that dp by dt is equal to force external. You remember we proved Newton's second law in case of rotational motion as well that is dp by dt is equal to f. So dl by dt is equal to r cross f. What is R cross F? That is torque. We defined it just some time back. So from this we get that dL by dt is equal to torque. So time rate of change of angular momentum is equal to torque. So we can write this statement that is time rate of change of angular momentum of a particle is equal to the torque acting on it. Right? Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, 
study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.